Coach, you want to make an opening statement or just go to questions? Yeah. Sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, really, really proud of the way our team played the second half, and especially you know in that fourth quarter. I thought that uh, we learned a lot from this from this experience. Uh, to say that I'm surprised with the way it played out, I'm not. Uh, we played a lot of young guys on the road, conference game, uh, first time playing with fans in a long time. Um, quarterback hadn't thrown a college pass before, uh, but uh, the way we rallied and played, especially in that second half, we had a lot to build on here, and uh, very excited coming out of that locker room. Open them up right here, Austin. Brian, you said you're not surprised. When you look at that first half, was it feeling out? Was it trying to get your feet back in football? How would you describe what was happening there? Yeah, no, I thought that we came out on offense, that, that one drive, hit that big, um, you know, that big run, which was great, and jump up early, and then... Um, you know, Noah gets gets that field goal, which you know, obviously you want three points. I mean, you want a touchdown, but we get three points. Uh, and then, you know, it's hard when, when the time of possession goes the other way with Minnesota. I mean, they, they do a great job. PJ does a really good job, and, and they play complementary football. And there was a point there in the second quarter where you know we just couldn't keep seem to get the ball back, couldn't get off the field on defense, and um, so there were some new guys in there feeling it out, and sometimes runs, you know, instead of going for one or two, they went for three or four, and they stayed on schedule, hit some passes. Uh, and then it took a little while, I think, for us to get a little on offense with CJ. Um, but, you know, that's his first game ever. I mean, that was his first pass, the first play of the game, you know, that ever. So there's a lot going on there. And uh, and so when you when you go into situations like that, you know that it may be a little bit murky, you know, murky early on, and that's what happened. Uh, right next door, Steve. Yeah, Coach, I want to ask you about C.J. He admitted in here a minute ago that he didn't feel like he was locked in at all in the first half. He was kind of struggling, getting his bearings. But it seemed like whatever you guys said to him at halftime, teammates settled him down, and second half uh, made some big plays. Yeah, well, you know, you don't just walk out uh, at Ohio State at quarterback and it just, you, know, you go out there and throw three or four touchdown passes and call it a day in this conference. Uh, Minnesota's a very good team. P.J. does an excellent job. That's a, that's a good a very well coached, hard playing team, and going on the road is not easy in this conference to get wins. Um, and so it doesn't just happen. And you know, I think for him, you know, there was a lot of things he was doing for the first time. Um, and when that happens, you know, it, it takes some time. Now you got to give him a lot of credit. I mean, there were a couple times where things weren't really going well, he missed some passes, but he, but he fought through it. And he and I had a conversation early on that uh, we're going to keep swinging no matter what happens and that we're not going to play close to the vest. That's not the way we do it here. And he responded. Uh, but, I, but I think, really, it was the guys around him. Uh, I think when you look at the, the defensive score that we got, that was huge. But then, what you know, the guys up front, Chris, uh, Garrett, I mean, those were big plays. And then, obviously, the play with Trey down the, you know, on that third down was big. Uh, over here to the left, Bill. Yeah, the defense, as you alluded to, uh, first of all, you played a lot of guys. Was that the intention to play that many guys, and how would you kind of assess the performance? Yeah, I got to look at the film and see. Um, I mean, they ran the ball really well and uh, controlled the game a little bit. So we'll look at it. But they, like you said, there's a lot of guys who played a lot of football. So uh, we have an opportunity now. We recruited a lot of young players, and you know, we lost those four linebackers. Uh, and, and because of that, you can see that we played, you know, we matched the personnel a little bit differently this, this, this game. And now we're going to have to go back and assess and really get a feel for that because, you know, when you're, when you're going in scrimmages and, and, you know, practice, you get a good feel for things, but you don't really know until you get into a game. And I think it's going to sort itself out a little bit, but we do like playing depth and guys who deserve to play are going to. Uh, over here to the right, uh, Adam. Yeah, Ryan, you mentioned keep, keep swinging. For a young quarterback, what does that approach do, especially when you obviously have a lot of guys who can help them out and, and, and extend the field the way you, the way you do? Yeah, I mean, um, I told them early on there's no expectations going in. You know, you, you might throw four interceptions, you might throw four touchdowns. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, again, you don't just, you know, I know everyone thinks you just walk out there and you're going to, you know, throw for 300 yards and a bunch of touchdowns. It doesn't just work that way. There's a lot of things for a young quarterback to process who has never played. I wish last year uh, that we had those seven games that we did play where he had played you know, 150 to 200 snaps and thrown the ball. He, he didn't have any of that. Not one snap. Uh, oh, I, I shouldn't say not one snap. He had a few snaps, but not one pass. You know, just a couple a couple plays here and there. So uh, usually this is a very unique situation for somebody who has really zero experience to go into a conference game on the road like this against a good team. This is a team who was top ten in the country before, you know, before the last year. So, um, but yeah, very, very impressed with the way he just kept swinging. Uh, right behind him, Bill. 
Ryan, uh, how close was Seven Banks being able to play, and do you think he and Cam Brown could both play next week? Yeah, I, yeah, I hope so. Um, you know, we had Cam, you know, Seven ready, kind of an emergency role, and um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to getting those guys healthy for next week. Right and behind him, Nick. Uh, just let's go back to how many guys played on defense. Like, I don't know. Do you guys not know yet who your best guys are there? Like, are you still trying to? I know you're not trying guys out when you're playing a game against a conference opponent, but are you still trying to figure out? Who the guys are you can rely upon on the defensive No, it's it's close. We have a lot of depth, and so we're playing a lot of depth right now. You know, and, and maybe it sorts out a little bit differently as we as we watch the film and uh, guys, you know, solidify some spots. But you know, until then, you know, it was really close in a lot of a lot of uh, positions, and um, you know, have to look at it and see if maybe we need to have a little more continuity in certain positions. But you know, if, when it was that close, you know, guys deserve to play, and then we're going to play, you know, depth. And I think that's going to serve us well, you know, certainly down the road. Um, I think, you know, when you start with maybe a non-conference game and, you know, you can get some guys into the game in the second half, it's a little different when you start with a conference game. And we knew that coming in. The whole goal here was to go 1-0, and and now the next goal is to go 2-0. And, and then we come up for air and figure out what's next. Uh, because it's a one, it was a one-game season here, and we didn't care what the score was. And it's going to be the same thing next week. And then we'll, we'll kind of come up for air and figure it all out. Right behind him, Nathan. How you know, long do you expect to be about Harry Miller, and how did you feel like um, Luke did, especially I guess considering the circumstances and the conditions, and maybe not having that much time, I, I guess, to work with? I, I thought he did an excellent job. Um, you know, stepping in in a big way. There's another young guy that has a very, very little experience. Uh, handled the weather, handled the calls, handled the environment, the fans, uh, and, and you know, see how he grades out. But I thought he handled everything really, really well. Where we have to play. Do you know what the situation is? Uh, that's, more, that, that's more day-to-day -day right now. Uh, over here, uh, Rob Waller. Ryan, you talked about bounce back after the interception. It could, you never know where it's going to go with right. the guy. How happy are you the way he responded? And, and did, was part of that you talking to him? Yeah, I mean, all, I, I told him going in that something like this was going to happen. You better stuff. You got to deal with it before you get into that environment because if you're trying to figure that out and figure out your feelings and your emotions in the game, it's not good. So, you know, one of the things that we talked about going in was that whatever those expectations are, like just throw them out the window. And we're going to have to. We're going to have to be resilient. Um, and I was impressed with it. You know, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't a great read and it wasn't a great throw. We'll go all the way to the back. Just going to do two more questions just, with Coach. Yeah, just the one thing I just yeah. wanted to say, though, you know, in, in that in that situation for him, you know, you can do you can say as many things as you want in practice, and you you can you can go against the scout team, but until that actually happens, and you actually have to you know, see the consequence for what you do, that's when you learn. And that was a learning experience. Happy start. Way in the back, Clay. Ryan, what's the impact of a defensive touchdown uh, tonight? Harrison and, and Garrett uh, double team. I thought that was that was probably the difference in the game, and then some of the explosive plays on offense, uh, yeah. certainly. But that anytime you get a defensive score, whether it's a block punt or, or something like that, that flips the scoreboard. It really is a huge uh, game changer. How'd the sideline react? I mean, could you tell a? Yeah, I, I thought again our sideline. I thought the energy in that, especially in that you know third to fourth quarter, there was as good as I've been around. It was fun. Okay, coach, thank you very much. We're going to talk about that defensive score.